Hi, I'm Paul Fenwick. I'm the Features Editor from Sea Angler Magazine. And you join me here today in a very breezy but glorious Cornwall. Behind me is the Camel Estuary. Over there is Pad Store. And today I'm going boat fishing. It's a bit breezy, but apparently we've been told that uh, where we're going to, it's really, really flat calm. And there's a lot of fish being caught at the moment. And I'm joined today by Sea Angler Magazine's contributing editor, Alan Yates. And joining him is X Game International Angler, but now bass guide around these parts, Chris Ogborn. And today, these two guys are going to offer, offer you loads of great advice, top tips on how to catch more fish when you're fishing a float. Right, so let's get out there and join them. Hi Chris, hi Alan. Well here we are. Chris you've brought us to an absolutely beautiful part of Cornwall. Can you tell us a little bit more about it and actually what we're going to catch when we get out there? No problem. We are in God's country, absolutely. We're on the River Camel and we're going to be heading out through the Camel Estuary and obviously out to sea. Um, you've got some of the best fishing in Cornwall without a doubt on the Camel Estuary. We've got the best skipper to show us the way. So we're going to catch some lance first, um, show the people the different sizes of lance. Some we can use for wreck fishing, some are good for bass, some for pollock. We're then going to go and catch some pollock, probably get some mackerel somewhere on the way. And after that, who knows, in the lap of the gods. Well listen, the wind's forecast to drop. Are you looking forward to it, Alan? Yeah, yeah, I'm after a big pollock. Let's get a big pollock. Let's get Rodney to fire it up and let's go fishing. Yeah, let's go. If anyone's going to find us the pollock, he's the man that finds us the pollock. No pressure, Rodney, at all. <laughs> Whether you're a shore angler or a boat angler, one important thing that you have to remember is planning your tides properly. You need a tide book. You need to find out where there's a spring tide, whether you're going to go low water fishing, high water fishing. Chris has a handy tip here that he can show you and he's going to share with us what he does with his tide tables. Chris, what do you do with your tide book? I reckon £1.40's worth is the best money anybody spends down here. But we mark ours up at the beginning of every season. Um, so I actually have a look at it. On the beach, we actually prefer spring tides when we're fly fishing for bass because everything's moving nice and fast. A lot of fish coming in quickly over the sandbars. But the boat fishermen and most of the shore anglers actually like the neap tides. A bit more time to adjust the drift if you're in a boat, a bit more time to think about it. The other thing on there, of course, is safety. If you're on a rock mark, make sure you've got a sure. retreat point yeah. as well. You want to know how fast the tide's coming in or not. Like but it I, is here. Like exactly like yeah. it is. We're about to get wet feet. Yeah. But I actually mark mine up for days when I can be at sea for the whole day. So in other words, I can get my boat off the mooring up in the top of the estuary around about nine o'clock, come back in at seven o'clock in the evening. So you would plan all this? I plan all that. At the start of the year? In January, I mark this thing up with all my colour coding. That's a good tip, that. He, if I can just show you there. He marks his tide tables up at the beginning of the year. Every month, he knows what tide he's going to fish. He knows where he's going to go fishing. He knows the time of the tides. Everything is meticulously planned. Planning is everything, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely right. Yeah. And, the, and the red one's the most important because whatever you do, no matter what business is on, no matter how much you've got to do, be on the water on the red marks. Sure. Best, yeah. tide, best tides of the year are the ones that are red marked. Great tip for you. Get your tide table, beginning of the year, go through it, look at the tides, pick the best tides for your particular area, mark them up. When that month comes, you look at your tide table, bang, you know where you're going, you know the tides, you're going to be safe.
right, catching a few lawns and mackerel for fresh bait. This could be a, a mackerel, this one, I think. Let's have a look. I've got some, here we go, yeah, some joy mackerel. Couple of joy mackerel. Make some nice fresh bait, possibly live bait one for a bass this afternoon when we go off a rock mark or if we're drifting over a bank. But uh, we'll get these in the live well, keep them nice and lively and get down and get some more. Keeping your bait in peak condition is very important when you see angling. Uh, there's no doubt about it, a cool boat bag like this. As you can see, we've got mackerel, live crabs. We'll keep your bait fresh. You've got a cool pack in there, a freezer pack. Um, I've put a tray in the side, which you can segregate things out. But essentially, with this insulation, it does keep your bait fresh all day. So when you're fishing, take a little bit out, use it, but leave the, the most of it in, on the, in the bag. It's the same in the boat, if you're in a boat. Don't get it all spread out. Um, and transporting it, of course, the good thing about this bag, zip it right up, is it fits bang on top of your box, so a bungee around it, and it's there ready and easy to carry. I was saying I should be without one of these. This is the new TF Gear Forsake Sandhill freezer pouch. Um, it's an ideal way to carry your frozen baits where you're fishing and keeping them frozen. It's pretty crucial with sandhills. Once they thaw out and the belly goes, they're not very good for bait. Uh, this, the pouch, you say it's got compartments to put the sandhills in. Um, it's also got a little freezer pouch, a little freezer pack that you stick in the freezer before you go. And that will keep this frozen all day. All round Velcro ceiling. I wouldn't be without one. Any takes, Al? No, I've had, had a few little packs, but they're, they're packing the end of the lure. They're small ones, um, and they're not getting the hook, but the bigger fish will just get the whole lot. I think the smaller fish are beating the bigger fish to it, actually, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. But I mean, the thing with, right, I've got, I've got a little uh, mono leader on there, only about six foot, where it's actually thoro carbon, but Tins in. You're feeling every single movement of that lure and anything touches it, you can feel it mm. straight away. Well, we're matching, we're matching the gear to the conditions, Paul, are we? I mean, there are small pollock at the moment. You get a shock if you get a big one, but it really is balanced gear with one of these. What do you got? You've got a a savage shad, is it? You've got a Sunday limitation. And I've got a lead head yeah. with a, a soft plastic on it. And you've got the same, you've got a short leader. Short mono leader. Braid, what, you've got 20 pound, 15 pound braid? 15 pound braid, and a, I've put a 20 pound mono leader on there. I think it just takes the shock out of it when it initially hits. Yeah. I mean, casting wise, you're doing what, 30 to 40 yards? 30 yards, yeah. That's Ample. That's plenty. Yeah, plenty. But here, I mean, the essence of this here is letting it sink to the depth of yeah. the fish are. Because they're not right on the top. You've got to, what I'm doing, I'm letting it sink right to the bottom and then just picking it up. If you're careful, you won't hook the bottom. And you still get excited when you feel that line getting dragged from the spool. Yeah, well, you just keep reeling. That's the thing with it. When you get a peck, you just keep reeling. I mean, I believe that Pollock, because they feed on sandals a lot, they're used to seeing a lure drag straight and not jerk so much. Mm. And it never works on the wrecks in the channel. A jerk, jag lure never works so well as a straight pulled one. I'll tell you what, Al, these blue strike rods really do take the strain, don't they? You've got your clutch set nice. Yeah, and nice once you well. get your clutch set, and oh, absolutely magic. I'll tell you what, look at that. Do you look need a that. net? Might need the net, mate, yeah. I think the rod's doing a grand job. When that fish dives, you get that lovely oh, curve. Hang on a minute. And I tell you what, the rod's so light, easy to handle. When that fish dives, it just cushions everything. It's magic. It's a real joy to use. And they go really mad at the last minute. Careful, there's careful. some... Oh, there's a rig hanging, hanging up there, there, there. It's not the biggest fish in the world. Whoa, there, there we go, there we go. Look at that, look at that. Whoa. He's just had his second wind. Just got his second wind. I tell you. It's a ras, mate. It's a ras. Look at that. 
Oh, then blow. Beauty. There you go, Whoa. on a spinner too. Beauty, absolute beauty. Anybody didn't believe that Ras took Lurs, oh, there you look go. look at that. Look at that beautiful Ras. Look at the fantastic colours on it. Absolute magic. Look at them teeth. Look at them. Crushing crabs and shrimps. That gorgeous dorsal fin, that big, almost tench-like paddle tail. That's where its power comes from. Gets himself back into his hole. Gorgeous eyes. I think we'll get him back. Oh, still nice and lively. Nice. This is the Foresight Lure Vest. It's ideal for the bass angler who wants to be mobile, or if bottom fishers, if you want to be get out on the rocks and got a long walk, everything. All on your body, easy to carry. Well, one size fits all, very adjustable. Let's check out the pockets. Got two in the front here. I keep my lures in the tube like that. Great way of doing it. Bit of line down here. First aid kit there. A pair of scissors. Line clips. In the back. Reel. Anything else you want to carry, boga grip, the lot. You can get it all on you, all compact, all easy to get to. Other features include a very comfortable harness, sits on the shoulder, carries the weight, ideal. High visibility, you like to be seen when you're in dangerous places. Um, the backpack, 25 litres, you can get a waterproof in there, a bottle of water, your reel, all those sort of things. Ideal, got plenty of room if you want to walk. Uh, and the one good thing about it is the pouch is detached, so you can use the rucksack on its own if you want to. All in all, a super product for the roving angler. Are you hooked up, Al? That looks a bit of a better it's, one. Yeah, it's, it's doggy. It's, oh, it's, it's a nice it's fish, that one. For the bottom. Hang on. He's diving for the kelp. Oh, he's come up now. No, it's not that big. Is it not? I think he was in the kelp. He was That's diving for the kelp. I think he was in the kelp. I managed to get him out. Here he comes. Another ras, is it? No. It's another ras. Another yeah. ras. The ras have woken up. And there was one time in my part of the country when you never see a ras in they're Kent. They're beautiful. They were Irish, you know, down here in Cornwall. And now they're everywhere. They're right up in the North Sea. Of course, they're Catching not... them on lures now? Yeah. At one time it was a nice crab or a juicy ragworm. A bit of metal or a bit of plastic. Yeah. That's all well, it takes. I think they I think they're a bit territorial and sometimes they attack a lure, mm. a bit like a salmon. They're not really eating it, mm. they're attacking it because it's in there, you're in my, my spot. Get it, out, yeah. Because yeah. that one was hooked outside the mouth rather than in. Yeah. Pretty things. Anyway, we're, aren't getting, they? we're getting, getting back. back, yeah. Right, I'm letting the line sink and I'm just Feathering it off the spool so it sinks slowly until I get where I think the bottom is. Touches the bottom, that's the bottom there, snap it over and start reeling. The trick is to get as near the bottom as you can for these pollock, well rats as well. And I had to touch them straight away. So you've got to keep reeling until it take it. They climb it sometimes, they just keep pecking it, pecking it until they find the hook. Other times they get, it gets too near the surface and they just go away. Just had a thumping, thumping take there. I've absolutely no idea what it is. Fishing very, very light. Lever drag, got a lever drag on, just in case there's some, something substantial takes us out of here. But um, it was a thump and tick, so um, everybody's starting to get a few bites now. So um, let's see what we've got. Oh, here we go. We've got a codling. <laughs> we've got a small codling. No. There you go. There's a welcome surprise. 
Pretty little cod. See his little barb there? He uses that to search out his food. He uses his lateral line down there. Pretty speckles. We're going to put him back. He wants to go back. Let's get him back now. And he's gone. Lovely. Not the biggest fish in the world, eh? But we're catching. Oh, keeping warm and dry on the shore is pretty essential to successful sea angling. Um, you don't go out in shirt sleeves in the middle of the winter um, and you want some control over your temperature. I wear this Force 8 two-piece suit. It's a salopets and a top jacket so you can sort of take the jacket off and keep the salopets on. They're ideal because they get you clean as well as dry and warm. Um, it's got lots of features, we'll have a look at them. The zips and the velcro go right up to the top of the collar, so you can really have a collar right up here. Uh, it's got a hood as well, obviously, and a drawstring. A couple of nice features I like is the adjustment on the side strap, so you can really pull it in tight. You've got a belt as well. I don't tend to wear the belt, but some people like it. Plenty of pockets, masses of pockets inside as well. Um, and down the bottom, you've got this uh, called a gusset arrangement. You can see it's quite wide, so you can get your boots through the jet, through the trousers. Also, it's got this inner lining with a clip on it. Now, that shut that off. If you wear rock hopper boots, they're just ideal because it gives you a little bit more splash protection. Anyway, the gusset closes like that, and you've got loads of adjustment there with the Velcro. Another great feature are storm cuffs. I mean, these are adjustable with Velcro and you can get a nice tight grip on your wrist. Now, serves for two purposes. One, it keeps the line away from, stops it jamming around your fingers or catching when you're casting. And of course it keeps the rain out. The rain just doesn't go in there. Open cuffs and you've got rain up your sleeves and it's very uncomfortable. Just right. Well, the big plus with the two-piece suit as opposed to the one-piece suit is that you can take the jacket off and just have the cellar pets. And you see they've got high at the back keeps the wind off your bottom, uh, keeps you clean as well they do in the summer, might not be really cold but they can keep you clean. Uh, storm cuffs on them, plenty of pockets as you can see, very adjustable strap, it also comes apart like that, easy to get, get apart and we talked about the, uh, the bottoms earlier. So a, a great, a great on, the, on their own they're a great uh, asset to my shore hanging I know. All in all Keep you nice and warm and dry, summer or winter. One thing I never think about or even pay any attention to when I'm fishing is water temperature. But Chris, you do, don't you? Very much so. That's why I'm dressed like I'm dressed and you're dressed with ladies. <laughs> uh, when we're doing anything, prospecting out on the sandbars, bit of light spinning, bit of fly fishing, I always advocate wet wading. Obviously in the very beginning and the back end of the season it's not entirely comfortable or practical but for almost through, all through the year if I can I will. You feel those temperature changes, you feel that nice warm water, as soon as you feel it stop, have a look around you and nine times out of ten you're going to see fish, no question. And this year it's actually been more so than your usual because we've had so much higher water temperatures around the coast. Which has led to catching more fish? Actually, no. No. I mean, I'm, there's a, two schools of thought on that. It's been lovely for the surfers, yeah. but the pro boats and the big professional boats that are sure. going out all the time, they actually think that it's been too warm. Really? Um, our temperature here, normally 15, 16 on a good year, we've had 19, 20 this year, which is significantly above normal. Um, and the fish seem at times to have been lethargic because of mm. it. Um, so I'm not entirely convinced about this lovely warm summer that we've had. But yeah. coming to the back end of it now, cooling down a bit great tip for people yeah. if you can do it try the wet wading i i think it catches more fish i'm sticking with my weirders <laughs> you don't live in the best part of the world like i do <laughs> which is true right here we go again we're in again fish are coming on the feed now let's have a look what we've got on here oh we've got a scad look at that we've got a horse mackerel on a piece of mackerel Oh, there we go. Oh. Lively, lively fish. Just took a chunk of mackerel. Take the hook out. It's got a spiked fin. 
just like a bass. Long fin there, built for speed, built for power. Tell you what we're going to do, I'm going to put this one straight back, just like a little mini tuna, isn't it? Look at that, beautiful. Best get the net, Rodney. Yeah, it's a bass. Well done. Yeah. Well done. We have a bass. Well done, Chris. You got a bass. We have a bass, yeah. We have a bass. Ah, oh, it's the first one. What do you get it on? Not the biggest bass in there. It's one of these new soft baits. Blue's the colour, is it? Blackfish minnow. We're on a fancy blue there this morning. I'm going to give you two tips in one here. Um, one of my favourite ways of catching a bass is to go stalking. Um, and just as you wouldn't go hunting a big brownie on a reservoir in the height of the midday sun, so too is that true on the beach. If you're actually going to go stalking a specimen bass, best time is in the evening when the sun's gone down, things have all quietened down. That's when the big solitary bass come prowling in around the rocks, nosing in amongst the kelp beds. That's when you've got a best chance of a really good fish. And the other side of this tip is whenever you're doing that, really really cautious wading you see so many people walking in just like they would on the reservoirs big bow waves coming off their legs splash commotion disturbance don't do it very very careful wading cautious slow steps feel your way through reduce those bow waves those pressure waves that are going out from your legs when you're wading that's what spooks the fish you're talking about a specimen bass anything up to 10 years old they don't get to 10 years old around this coast without being very, very clever indeed. Cautious approach, delicate wading, subtlety, that's the way to catch yourself a specimen bass. A little bit bigger, Chris. A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger too, isn't it? But they're a lovely fish to catch yeah. on a lure, aren't and they? The colour and with your light spinning, light spinning lures in off the rocks like that. Yeah. And you knew that was a bass. As soon as they hit, they too tend to come high, don't they? When they you straight them. away, as soon as they hit, fish on, yeah. it's a bass. Yeah. Oh, How nice one. Is that? Yeah, nice one. Get him back and get the okay. Definitely, let him go for another day. I think. Big grass. That take the same lure as what you caught yeah. the bass on. Right. Well done, sir. That's a, nice That's a beauty. <laughs> Absolute beauty. There you are, what a, sir. What a, what a, what a beautiful fish. Yeah. What a beautiful Cornwall wrasse. And, and it was on the bass lure again. Absolutely beautiful. Fish from the black I mean, fish look at that. That's a, that's a sandal type. Can we get that, that out? That blackfish minnow is yeah. probably the most versatile. A long wiggly tail and it worked yeah. for the wrasse as well. And you see he's pulled that one around a little bit. Yeah, it's, um, it's messed it easy, up. They're easy to There are it. more and more wrasse being caught on soft plastics now, aren't there? Definitely. Yeah, I think Absolutely. more people are trying for them. That's why, aren't they? Yeah. Look at the colours. There's been a catch 22 about that. The more you fish it, the more you catch, the more you fish it. Yeah. But having yeah. said that, yeah. these blackfish minnows are good. These are fine yeah. specimen of a wrasse. Yeah, they're, 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 they're. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, sir. Is your yeah, fish? Would you like to return him? Straight back That's a super into fish, no, I trust you, I've seen your catch and release much better than mine. Well, nowadays, with the move towards light fishing, braid lines, very light monos, uh, you sometimes need a 10 pound tip, you sometimes need a 20 or a 30 pound tip. Well, TFG have come up with the answer with the Delta Tri Tip range. It's a new, new rod. It's got three tips. Now, as I said before, one's 10, the white one here, they're color coded. The white one's the 10. The green one, I don't think you won't quite see that, is the 20, and then the orange 
is the 30. So you've got three rods in one, basically. You've got a duple on handles, a butt gimbal. That's for if you want to use a butt pad. It slots in the butt pad, gives you a lot more purchase. Rings, SIC, as I said, braid friendly. Most people are using braid nowadays. And uh, these softer action rods are what you want. You want to, the 10 pound tips are ideal for braid, and you can see that. It is a multiplier model. All together, brilliant. You got three rods for one. There's a, an awful lot of lures around. I mean, you can you can get addicted to collecting lures, um, and they're, they're they're for lots of things. I mean, basically, what I've got here, I've got a. This is my my boat lure charter boat lure box. It's got shads. Those are the lead-headed shads. It's got jelly worms, which are quite good for pollock. And then I've got some small sidewinders. These are deadly for pollock, and they catch bass as well. And you can get in a lot lot of colours. Um, right down to the old. This one is a bass assassin with a long wiggly tail. Lots of varieties, as you can see. Um, this box here, this little box here, I've got, it's basically bass lures, I've got plugs. They've got a popper plug there. Popper's got a flat face, so it skims across the top, disturbs the water, that's why it's called popper. Then these I find very good for bass and pollock. Uh, any kind of jelly worm or with a lead head on it, this, this lead head, comes out of the worm like that, so you can change it. So if you're fishing, you want to change your lure, you just change, change to another eel or whatever. There's an awful lot of them around, as I said. You can get imitation worms. And the old fashioned sand eel here, that's a red gill, that, that dates back, that dates me and all. But it's, uh, it's still relevant and it still catches. You've got lots of, the, even, even down to fly fishing with, with lures, you can see fly fish. Uh, conditions have got to be right, but you can. There's some LRF lures here, tiny little lures, little baby lead heads. You can go really small. There's a, there's a sort of LRF type lead head with a hook. You can put any kind of lure on that you like. Uh, there's lots of them. You, I mean, as I say, I've got, I'm addicted here. Look, look at this one. This one actually flashes blue. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I used to put it on my tackle box and think the police were coming. But anyway, that, they're all worth trying. And I, I've got an old saying, I've, you never really dismiss anything. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. Something will work. I've caught bass on, on rainbow trout and all sorts of things. That's the old uh, vibrator spoon. These are really good for, well, they're good for freshwater bass. I know that. Anyway, there's an awful lot. And, I, and it's a good idea to sort of segregate them out. If you're going bass fishing, you want a small lure, you'll be mobile. Little box like that's just ideal. You don't want to take too many. You don't want to take the kitchen sink. In the boat, as I said, a zip up lure. Now this one, there's a nice collection of everything here. You've got these savage shads. Now they're lead headed. So if you're fishing really deep water and you want to get a lure down without having a, a lead and a trace, they're the ones, they really sink quickly. And that tail action on them, it sets up live, lots of vibration, sight fish, love it, you know. There's also he's got the old sand lil again, the old red gill with a flame tail, shads, everything. Lots of lead heads. There's some starting to get into the LRF scene with, with the smaller, smaller lures, but uh, there you go. Oh, and one that does catch quite well. It's a sort of mini perk or a blade or whatever you like to call it. It's probably meant for, it's meant to be a minnow, I expect, for freshwater fishing, but they work, they catch squid as well. There you go. Right, Dad. How much does one of them cost, eh? Well, as you can see, we've moved around the corner from Puffin Island into much calmer water. What we're going to do here is, we're going to fish as tight as to the cliff as we possibly can. There's a lot of bass that swim around here and hunt along the sides. We're going to drift down. A couple of the guys are going to use some live lawns and a couple of us are going to use some lures. So let's see what this drift can bring us. Well, this just shows how unpredictable sport is and how it can make an absolute idiot of you because we're drifting just down from the dune bar, probably one of our best bass marks in the entire estuary. And the one thing I would not expect to cook here is a gurnard. And yet a gurnard is what we have. 
So in 30 years of the Camel Estuary, that is a first for me, hooking a gurnard inside the doom bar. Oh, let's get him out and let's get him back. That's a beautiful little fish. Again, a bit like the bass, there's spines everywhere. But we won't worry too much about that because we're going to put him straight back. Probably one of the prettiest fish that swims. How lovely is that? Not the biggest fish in the sea, but arguably one of the most beautiful. Just look at the colours in those fins. Beautiful turquoise blue on the edges. Lovely body line, lovely markings. Fins and spikes everywhere. proving me totally, totally wrong yet again. The second gurnard in 30 years fishing inside the Doom Bar. I can't yeah, believe you've got it. you got yours on a lure, because gurnards take as we know. Yeah, yeah. And they also yeah. like a bit of back crawl. I, I put a bit of bait on them. Amazing. Them a lovely fish. They're nice to eat as well. I think too, absolutely. Too to kill, though, I they? have to say that yours is bigger than mine, but I think mine's prettier than yours. <laughs> yeah, Aren't they both, beautiful? They're both tubs. So they've got yeah. that blue round the edge. That means they're a tub gurnard, not, not a true red gurnard. Beautiful. Well, this one can go back to well, fight another day. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's right. Nice line up mine. I've had a bit of fun. He's taught me something about my favourite mark. Don't ever assume the next fish is going to be a bass, because it's not. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Amazing. They bite. These where I get nipped. They bite. <clears throat> Ouch. Ouch. Would you believe it? There's a little place on my float rig. It's definitely not a garfish or a mackerel. I don't think I've ever caught a flatty on a, on a float rig before. Fished on the surface. Anyway, he's only a little fella, so we'd better get him back. Uh, a new rod in the TF Gear Delta range is the Slick Tip. Now it's a, a three-piece, 15-foot beach caster low rider rings which are braid friendly, uh, a nice marked tip, it's a nice bright orange tip, Duplon type grip all the way up, an adjustable reel seat so you can slide your reel, whichever you, whatever reel you're using you can put it where you like, nice grip at the back to get your fingers round. Um, it's my pride and joy this model, I'm really pleased with it and I use it a lot myself because this low rider rings give it that slim line effect in the wind and you see bites with it. It doesn't wobble and shake about like some of the models with bigger rings. And all told, I, I think this is great rod. And one of the good things about it, now I'm a so-called expert, but I would recommend this if you're a novice, this won't blow you away. You'll be able to bend it, and you'll be able to cast it. So it's a good starter rod as well. One really good tip for anybody who's doing a bit of rock hopping around the coast, um, whether it be with a fly rod or a bit of light spinning rod, is always look for rocks, places where there's some structure and some feature. Um, the long, easy, smooth, clean bit of rock at the top of the beach might look like a good casting platform, but if there's no structure and there's no feature, nothing to hide the bait fish, nothing to hide the things that fish feed on, you're wasting your time. What you need is weed cover, a bit of kelp maybe, broken rocks, broken stones, a bit of structure, that's the kind of thing that hides the shrimps, the peeler crab, bait fish. Those are the kind of things that predatory fish are looking for. That's what you're looking for too. There are times when uh, anglers want a different rod from the standard beach cast. You want something a little bit lighter. It's particularly the case for fishing for bass and flatfish. Um, and this is the uh, new Delta bass and flatty rod. It's 12 foot and it casts three to five ounces. As you can see, quite a lot slimmer than the standard beach caster. SIC rings, nice marked tip up there like that, fluorescent. 
It's a, got a fixed reel seat. Primarily, it's a, it's a multiplier model. Two equal sections, ideal for estuary or surf, bass or flatties. And if you fancy fishing a bit lighter, this is the model to go for. Every so often, every one of us experiences a crack off. It can happen for a number of reasons, but when it does happen, it's the most annoying thing in the world, especially if you're catching a few fish, it's a few fish coming through, it's just the most annoying thing, you're wasting time, you've got to put a new reel on, tie some new line on, tie a new shock leader. Couple of tips. First and foremost, don't panic when the fish are coming through. Always check first before you chuck that your line is not wrapped around the tip. If I just show you here, if you're reeling in pretty quick, you've dropped the fish, you've clipped another rig on, you pick it up, you're going to cast, you haven't checked for the line wrapped round your tip. Once that line wraps around the tip and it goes tight, bang, it's going to snap. Bosh, you've lost it. You're wasting time, you're going to miss the fish. Always, always check that that line isn't wrapped around the tip. Easiest way to do that is just take a couple of seconds, it's all it takes, you're not going to lose much time, is just wind your rig up to the top of your rod tip, disengage it out of gear, just drop it down, see if it's free flowing. If the line doesn't move or moves very erratically, judders a little bit, nine times out of ten your line's wrapped around the tip. Another way of doing it is you can get to your rig, to your casting position. You can look at it visually with your eyes, but if you've got a long rod, you might not be able to see that far. Just literally get your line in your hand like this. Just pull it a couple of times, just like that. Just to, you can watch, actually watch the tip and the line is moving up and down through your tip ring like that. Always, always don't waste time, don't lose rigs, catch fish, fish safe, fish comfortably. Check that your line isn't wrapped around the rod tip. And then, when you've checked it, you can clip your rig up, like so, get it on the clip. Like that. Clip it up. The fish are coming through. Remember, don't panic. Stay calm. Keep everything nice and smooth. Check it. Disengage it again. Just drop the line down. Just a touch. That line's nice and free. We're ready to go. Hassle-free fishing. Check the line, wrap around your rod tip. Nine times out of ten, that is the cause of all crack-offs on the beach. Well, if you're a beach angler, you'll be out in all weathers. Um, and a lot of people who fish steep shingle beaches or short tidal areas like to have a shelter, some kind of base. I mean, it's essential to keep your gear dry for one thing, and you can duck in there and bait up, and it keeps your bait fresh. Anyway, this is the Forsyte shelter from TF Gear. It's a new one. It's a compact design with uh, the poles break down so, that, so it can be squeezed in a bag. We'll show you that in a minute. Uh, much easier to carry. It's got pouches in the bottom like wings and they can be filled up with sand shingle or whatever and it helps you put it up when you first get there. Um, putting a shelter up on your own can be a bit awkward but with this system you fill it up with sand and shingle then you can pull it up snap it into position. Quite a nice tight ridge, um, it's stiffish, it doesn't blow around in the wind as you can see fairly roomy. Um, this is the, the whole bit, the whole thing put in a bag, easy you can strap it to the top of your box with a couple of bungees or you can carry it on your shoulder. Uh, a bit easier than the, hop, the old style which was a long pole, the whole length, 
with a curve at the top, which was difficult to stow in the car and not so easy to get in a rod bag. Going out this winter or in the summer, this is what you need to keep you dry. It's one of those undeniable facts of life that shore anglers seem to spend most of their time trying to cast out as far as they possibly can, trying to send their baits halfway across the Atlantic. When you get out in the boat, the boat anglers spend most of their time trying to cast into the rocks. Um, that actually tells you something about where the fish are likely to be. The killing zone, certainly when you're doing light spin tactics like this, is probably going to be within 15, 20 metres of the shore and not that much further out. Um, so don't have a casting competition with yourself. Cast comfortably, cast reasonably close and move your bait through the rocky areas. That's where the fish are. Well, the trend towards light line and light tackle is not only happening in the spinning scene and LRF, it's also happening on the beach. And beach casters are getting lighter. And the reason, one of the reasons is because the continental anglers have been fishing very light for years and our teams from abroad have brought them here home. Our TF gear are not going to be left out, so we brought out a new three-piece rod and it's called the Continental. It's a very lightweight, 15 foot. You can see by the tip thickness, that is an extremely thin tip. Now, its casting rating is 250, but bear in mind that is the casting rating with the gear, rigs, bait, the lot. So it's not meant for 250 lead and loads of hooks. I tend to use, I've got one I'm using all the time, I tend to use four ounce leads with it, 12 pound, 15 pound, braid, six pound mono you can go down to. Um, features, well it has got a fixed reel seat. It is essentially a fixed ball rod. Um, you'll notice it's got the low rider rings, nice mark tip. Uh, the bottom one is back to front as everybody says, but I think people are realising now that is the way to use it because if, you, if you've um, got a fixed ball reel on, your line comes off in a loop. It's very easy when the ring's that way round for the loop to catch over there and clag up. With this way, if it does get over there, it slips off. And that's the reason it's back to front. It's not the manufacturer put it on the wrong way around. Um, that's about it, really. A uh, great rod for the summer beach, for mackerel, garfish, mullet, bream, all that sort of light line fishing when you're using size four hooks. And it's a great rod for match fishing as well. If you're a club matchman, you see every single bite on that tip. Altogether, it's in the Forsyth range, um, which are already a well-respected range of rods, um, and it's now one of the leading models of the continental variety available, I think. Well, we're almost at the end of our Cornish adventure, guys. It's been a fabulous few days in Cornwall, hasn't it? It's, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. This morning was just out of this world on the boat. I think we had, what, 13 different species. 12 or 13 we had, Pollock, yeah. codling, scad, mackerel, ras, gurnard, bass, gurnard. 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 Don't forget the gurnard. I mean, you, we couldn't have wished for anything better. Have you enjoyed it, Al? Oh, yeah, I, I did. I really enjoyed the boat fishing. I like, I like this, the light line approach, the braid line and everything else. Do you think we would have done it without this guy? No, no, he's been a great help. He's <laughs> been great. You've been a great help. And the help. skipper. The skipper was good as well. Yeah. yeah. No, all, Thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Yep. They're absolutely brilliant. And yeah. uh, you've, uh, you've got to say, you've been lucky with the Cornish weather because in September this is unusual to say the least. But most importantly, and I think so many anglers forget to do it, we get so wrapped up in the complexities of tackle and method, we've actually had fun. And an yeah. awful lot of anglers I forget agree. to go out and have fun and have a laugh, and we've done that as well. Yeah, definitely. It's been, it's, it's been an absolute blast. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, if, if you're going to come to Cornwall, you need to come to the Camel Estuary, you really need to visit it. There is heaps of fishing to be done here. Beaches, rocks, boat fishing, it's absolutely incredible. And um, we've still got a couple of rods out there, guys. I think we'll uh, give it one hour before we uh, head off and uh, yeah. do some keep, Cornish keep, hospitality. Keep, we do have one of two Cornish ales you need to try as well, <laughs> so we might get to that later on. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed watching us fishing. We've had a great time. See you again soon. For the full range of TF Gear products, check out our website. It's tfgear.co.uk.